Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel CSN IT Tutorials by Vrishali. In some previous sessions, we have started operating system subject playlist where we have discussed about the process, threads, then multi-threading with simple examples. I have attached a complete OS playlist link in below description box. Now, in today's session, we will discuss one of the most important topic that is CPU scheduling. Here, we will discuss about the FCFS scheduling algorithm with solve example. Let's start the session. So previously we have already discussed all the subjects. I have attached a complete playlist of this subject in below description box. Please subscribe my channel and also share this with your friends. So this is our today's course outline. We will discuss each and every points one by one. At the end we will discuss some important question bank. Let's see. The first question is what exactly scheduling? As we discussed earlier, operating system follows the multiprocessing and multitasking environment. Multitasking means to perform multiple tasks at the same time. That's why they provide more efficient and faster environment in operating system, different mobile applications or in website. Now in operating system, there is a one scheduler. Scheduler manage and decide order of different process for execution. And this process is called as scheduling. As per the definition, scheduling is one kind of process in operating system. They decide which process should run at what time on particular CPU. Also, they decide that which type of resources are required for execution to particular process. Basically, Scheduling process decide or manage complete multitasking environment. That's why it is one of the most important process in operating system. There are total two types of scheduling. Either it is preemptive and non preemptive scheduling. Let's understand first what exactly preemptive scheduling. See, preemptive scheduling works in multitasking environment. Assume that Operating system assign CPU to the process one for execution. But at the same time, some higher process that is process two have came. So at that time, operating system switch CPU process one to process two for execution. So this is called as preemptive scheduling. They support multitasking environment. But on the opposite of that, there is a non preemptive scheduling. Here, CPU suppose assigned to the process 1. So they complete their process 1 execution and after that only they assign to the process 2. Basically, they follow the first come first serve priority process. This is called as non preemptive scheduling. So this preemptive scheduling is controlled and managed by operating system. But non preemptive scheduling is controlled and managed by the process itself. Here, Preemptive scheduling has faster response time as compared to non preemptive. Again, preemptive scheduling, they have a better CPU utilization because they use the multitasking environment. But in non preemptive, they have a poor CPU utilization. Now, there are some algorithms like round robin, SRTF, priority, they support the preemptive scheduling techniques. And in non preemptive scheduling, there is a FCFS. SJF, these algorithms have supported. Now, as per the real life examples, there are different multitasking operating system like Windows, Linux, this supports preemptive scheduling techniques. Again, it can be used in different real time environment or real time systems. Non preemptive scheduling generally used in some oldest operating system like batch operating system or different embedded system. So this is the basic difference between preemptive and non preemptive scheduling. Now in operating system, there are different types of scheduling algorithms as we discussed earlier, like round robin algorithm, then SJF shortest job first priority algorithm is there, then FCFS first come first serve. In today's session, we will solve the example of FCFS algorithm, then SRT shortest remaining time first and multi level queue. So every algorithm have used as per their characteristics and feature. So let's understand first what exactly FCFS scheduling algorithm. 
the first scheduling algorithm which is called as fcfs fcfs stands for first come first serve is one of the simplest scheduling algorithm in operating system here the process that arrives first get executed first by the cpu they follows this property as per their characteristics fcfs is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm means when cpu executed the process 1 they complete their process 1 and after that only they serves the process 2 basically cpu serves one by one to each and every process as per their arrival timing again it is very simple to implement they have a easy logic and minimal calculations are there so this is a short introduction about fcfs algorithm let's understand in more detail now before solving example you must know about some basic terminologies in scheduling algorithm see here in this diagram this is a process state transition diagram in our previous session we have already discussed about this with some real life example i have attached link of that video in below description box now see here first state which is called as new state here your process have created and it is moved to the ready state in ready state your process is waiting for cpu allocation and after getting cpu it moves to the running state running state means is a actual execution state and after executed it goes to the terminated state now as per this state transition diagram there are some terminologies this terminology is useful for your university exams as well as gate exams for solving the example let's see first that is arrival time arrival time indicate that process arrival timing in queue for execution next one is a burst time burst time means actual time required for particular process to the execution next one is a completion time so after executed your process goes to terminated state so which is called as your completion timing next turn around time so it indicate that total time from arrival to completion which is called as turn around time as per the formula completion time minus arrival time that is turn around time next one is a waiting time sometimes what happen your process goes to waiting state they are waiting for cpu allocation or different resources so that was indicated by the waiting time as per the formula turn around time minus burst time that is your waiting time next one is a response time when cpu is allocated to the particular process first time that was indicated by the response time and the last one is a gantt chart gantt chart is a visualization chart they display every state of process as per the particular timing so this is a visualization chart now as per this terminologies we will solve the example of first come first serve scheduling algorithm so as we discussed earlier this solve example is important for your university exam as well as gate exam purpose now let's see how to solve this example so before solving you must know about which data is given and what data you need to find out see in this particular table process numbers are given like p1 p2 p3 and p4 again arrival time is given p1 is arrive at 0 p2 is arrive at 1 p3 is arrive at 5 and p4 is arrive at 6 clear so assume that 5 means 5 o'clock 6 means 6 o'clock in this way it is easy to understand now next burst time is given burst time means actual time is required for the execution so p1 required the two unit of time for the execution so two unit means two hours for the execution assume this thing now again p2 required the two unit of time p3 required the three unit of time for execution and p4 required the four unit of time so this data is given now you need to find out the completion time turn around time waiting time then average turn around time and average waiting time so this type of question have asked in your university exam for 8 to 10 marks 
and for gate exam they have asked like what is the completion time of p3 process what is the waiting time of p4 process in this way so prepare accordingly now how to solve this see the first step is you need to draw the gan chart gan chart is the visualization chart they display details of process their arrival time and their completion time in visualize manner so so we are using here fcfs first come first serve scheduling algorithm so let's start with the p1 so p1 arrival time is 0 so just mention this thing in gan chart see what is your first process p1 and their arrival time is 0 now what is the burst time of p1 that is 2 unit so mention here 2 means 0 is the arrival time process is p1 and they complete their execution at 2 unit clear now next one is a p2 p2 arrival time is 1 so when p2 have came here but at that time cpu is busy with p1 right so this p2 process goes to the waiting state now after completion of p1 p2 is running clear so what time required for execution p2 that is 2 unit so 2 plus 2 equal to 4 means at 4 o'clock this is a completion time of p2 clear now at 4 o'clock which process have came no is there next process p3 will come at 5 o'clock right so for 1 hour your cpu goes to idle state means there is a no any process your cpu is free at that time clear now at 5 o'clock p3 process have came clear what is the burst time 3 unit so 5 plus 3 equal to 8 now next p4 process have came at 6 o'clock but at that time your cpu is busy with p3 right so this p4 process goes to the waiting state now after completion of p3 p4 goes to running state now what is the burst time of p4 4 so 8 plus 4 equal to 12 so this is your gan chart representation now in gate exam they also ask this type of question what is the total completion time of this process that is 12 again they ask what are the completion time of p3 that is 8 in this way that's why gan chart is one of the most important visualization chart it is easy to understand now you need to find out the completion time see p1 completion time is 2 here clear p2 completion time is 4 then p3 completion time is 8 and p4 completion time is 12 so in this way you need to find out the completion timing now the next one is a turn around time see the formula of turn around time is completion time minus arrival time see burst time means time required for the execution but total around time means actual time is required for the execution of particular process so what is the turn around time of p1 completion time is 2 arrival time is 0 so 2 minus 0 that is 2 so p1 required the turn around time 2 unit for execution next one is p2 process so 4 minus 1 that is 3 they required a 3 unit of time why because actual they required a 2 unit of time for execution plus 1 hour they goes to the waiting state here right so total turn around time is 3 next for p3 8 minus 5 means 3 unit of time is required and p4 process turn around time is 12 Minus six, that is six, in this way. So you need to remember this formula. Turn around time means completion time minus arrival time. Now the next one is a waiting time. Means when CPU is busy with other process, the previous process goes to the waiting state. So how much waiting time is required for the each process? See, the first one is a P1. So turn around time is two, and their burst time is two. So 2 minus 2 equal to 0. They didn't goes to waiting state. Next P2 process. 
टर्न अराउंड टाइम इज थ्री एंड बर्स्ट टाइम इज टू दैट इज थ्री माइनस टू इज इक्वल टू वन मीन्स फॉर वन आर दे गोज टू द वेटिंग स्टेट नेक्स्ट वन इज पी थ्री थ्री माइनस थ्री इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज अ पी फोर दैट इज सिक्स माइनस फोर इज इक्वल टू टू मीन्स फॉर टू आवर्स दे गोज टू द वेटिंग स्टेट सो इन दिस वे यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट कंप्लीशन टाइम टर्न अराउंड टाइम एंड वेटिंग टाइम ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी प्रोसेस नाउ द नेक्स्ट वन इज टू फाइंड आउट द एवरेज टर्न अराउंड टाइम एंड द फॉर्मूला इज टोटल टर्न अराउंड टाइम डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल प्रोसेस सो वॉट इज द एडिशन ऑफ दिस थिंग सिक्स प्लस थ्री प्लस थ्री प्लस टू दैट इज फोर्टीन एंड डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल प्रोसेस फोर सो फोर्टीन डिवाइडेड बाय फोर सो एवरेज टर्न अराउंड टाइम इज थ्री पॉइंट फाइव यूनिट अगेन वॉट इज द एवरेज वेटिंग टाइम सेम फॉर्मुला टोटल वेटिंग टाइम डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल प्रोसेस सो टोटल वेटिंग टाइम मीन्स टू प्लस वन थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय टोटल प्रोसेसेस आर फोर सो थ्री बाय फोर दैट इज जीरो पॉइंट सेवन फाइव सो इन दिस वे यू नीड टू सॉल्व दिस एग्जाम्पल नाउ लेट्स टेक अ क्विक रिविजन ऑन वॉट आर द डिफरेंट अप्लीकेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिदम सो दिस अल्गोरिदम मेनली यूज इन ओल्डेस्ट वर्जन ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम दैट इज बैच ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम दे प्रोसेस ईच एंड एवरी बैचेस इन फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व मैनर अगेन इन प्रिंट स्पूलिंग सिस्टम वाइल डूइंग द प्रिंटिंग वेन यू प्रिंट अ पर्टिक्युलर डॉक्यूमेंट यू सेंड डॉक्यूमेंट टू द प्रिंटर राइट सो प्रिंटर प्रिंट वन बाय वन पेजेस इन फर्स्ट कम फर्स्ट सर्व मैनर Again, in customer care center, they attend calls of customer as per the priority, like first come first serve manner. In retail billing queue, in any supermarket, in D Mart, customer waiting in line for payment purpose. So they use the first come first serve technique. Again, in operating system for scheduling different trades and process as per their characteristics, as per their specification, they use FCFS scheduling techniques. now as per the previous year question paper these are the most important questions like list and explain cpu scheduling criteria like pre pre to non pre to techniques for 6 marks then uh, is fcfs is a pre to or non pre to so you must know about this thing right so justify this for 6 marks then characteristics of fcfs that we have already discussed on first slide explain with example again a uh, sub so particular example is given here like process arrival time and burst time and you need to find out their remaining completion time turn around time waiting time then average turn around time and waiting time and also prepare gantt chart for 8 marks so prepare accordingly this particular topic all the best and stay tuned for my next video thank you